All right, another option for integrating research into your writing involves um, during the course of your paper leading into a block or large section of quote directly quoted material. Now I also put in parentheses here that I don't recommend this most of the time. Um, I don't recommend this because kids tend to overuse it a lot. Now adults, they tend to be better, but um, if you use large block or section quotes, um, there's going to be some difficulty there. Um, okay, so according to the MLA style guide, if you are going to quote directly um, another author's work that spans uh, more than four lines of verse, which verse means poetry, or more than three lines of prose, and prose means paragraphs or regular text, um, you've got to follow this particular style um, for it. So the first rule with regard to this is that you'll have to lead into it, lead into the quote, um, and I suggest doing the similar as you did before um, with a sentence that ends with a colon. Um, and then the second part of it is then you're going to have to put the text into the body of your paper but then you're going to have to format it in a specific way. Um, and your citation goes in in a different way. And this is why it's not recommended, because people tend to screw one of these things up. So um, what I did is I pretended like I actually was writing a paper. Um, this random text is actually just going to be the body of my paper. Um, but what I'm going to do then is I'm going to steal what I was using before as an example. Um, and let's say leading into this paragraph, and I want to match destination formatting, and I'm going to get rid of the bold. Um, I'm actually even going to kind of combine a couple of things. What I've done is, according to Vera Tweed, comma, food nowadays is not as nutritious as it was in generations past. Um, so then I put the set, the colon there, and then what I'm going to do is, because I've got a copy of the source that it came from, uh, namely this extended quote right here, I'm going to copy it, and then I'm going to actually paste it into the body of the paper, and I'm going to click Match Destination Formatting. Now, this all right here is Vera Tweed's work. And if I were to leave it as is, we would have a serious problem. Um, but according to the MLA style guide, what you're supposed to do when you have this much text, and it's, it just barely goes beyond the three lines of prose, so therefore we've got to follow the style guide. What you actually have to do is you have to indent this entire section an inch from the edge of the margin. So what I did is I've already selected the text I'm going to move, and then I'm going to move this in. Now, what this indicates to the reader with this huge indentation is that it's not the writer's original work, that it came from somebody else. But the other issue that we have at this point is we've got to give credit where credit is due. Now, what's different then is normally we would put our quotation or our citation after the word health and in front of period if it was a shorter quote. But not in this case. With the extended quote, we actually have the period first, then we have the quotation or uh, parentheses, then we have the author's last name, and if I take it uh, to the next step too, and I'm making sure I probably screwed this up. No, I didn't. I'm correct. Um, what I'm going to do is I put the page number there, and I don't put anything afterwards. Now. When I restart my next paragraph, and you see how my cursor is down here, when I restart the same paragraph as I had before, I'm going to have to move this back over, and, and I'm just going to type random text just to illustrate what it should look like if I were typing sentences afterward. But you've got to do a complete sentence leading into the quote that leads the quote conceptually. You've got to do your colon, then you've got to put the quote that's not your work in there and make sure that it is indented an inch. Then you've got to give your citation after 
uh, the period rather than before, which normally if it was in the body of the text, it would have been before. And then when you restart your paragraph after what you've stolen from the other author, you've got to go back and make sure that your indentation is right there. And that's why uh, op this fifth option, this one with regard to um, large block quotes, it's, it's very precarious. There's a lot of opportunities to make mistakes. Um, but in either case, um, this is how it should look. You lead into it with your own words. You have your own paragraph and your own bodies and stuff. Um, complete sentence, colon, indented section, period included, citation after the period, and then restart the body of your essay um, right there.